absence uh, seizures is the topic and this was uh, formerly known as a uh, petite mal uh, seizures and sometimes it's known as CAE which is childhood absence epilepsy so what is this well before I jump into what it is uh, just a very brief uh, uh, explanation of a seizure for those of you that are learning this for the for first time a seizure is basically abnormal uh, unregulated electrical discharge in the brain and this discharge uh, because it's unregulated it can cause a significant uh, um, interruption in the normal brain activity and um, that essentially is the heart of the uh, essence of a seizure interrupts normal brain function so just in case you know you're not even sure what a seizure is and there's various different types uh, quite a few in fact but absence seizures is the number two most common especially in children and um, absence seizures um, both in real life and uh, in licensing exams is very common it occurs uh, usually between the ages of three and seven and um, the hallmark of this type of seizure in terms of its presentation in in the real world and of course on licensing exams is you have these things called staring spells and what that means is the child briefly will just stare out into space for a few seconds usually about 10 seconds or so and becomes unresponsive and then after the seizure is over it goes back to being uh, normal again not even knowing that he or she had the seizure so it's very important to remember that it's a pretty characteristic uh, presentation that you would be able to recognize pretty quickly on a clinical vignette so the terms that you'll probably see are glazed or spaced out or uh, blank when they're describing how the child uh, is um, behaving and then afterwards uh, the child is completely normal back to normal uh, after about 10 seconds or so and uh, are you normally unaware that the seizure has even occurred the problem with this is that it's commonly mistaken for daydreaming and goes undiagnosed there is also another characteristic um, aspect of this that is very easy to spot and that's the EEG findings EEG of course is the test that you do to uh, diagnose seizures and it's called a three per second spike spike um, and wave now what does that even mean well I'll draw a quick diagram basically what that means is that if you've got an EEG and I'm gonna draw uh, a segment here that lasts one second well in that one second there's gonna be three spikes so I'll just draw basically you know some normal brain activity and then all of a sudden there's gonna be three distinct spikes over the course of one second so that's what that is referring to and I encourage you to look that up uh, on a, on the internet uh, look up a EEG strip you don't necessarily have to be an expert on how to answer EEGs for licensing exams but this one particular characteristic finding that you see in absence seizures is well worth uh, looking up the treatment of choice uh, treatment of choice for absence seizures is a medication called ethosuximide and for those of you that are studying for USMLE step one I will quickly mention the mechanism of action mechanism of action how the drug actually works because this is tested and the mechanism of action of ethosuximide is that it blocks calcium channels and I have personally seen this exact question on US assembly step one when I took it you know several years ago so let's jump right into some clinical vignettes seven-year-old boy 
was brought to the clinic by his parents, who are concerned about his low grades in school. Teacher reports that although he is not having any behavioral problems, he is having a great deal of trouble paying attention. Neuropsychological testing reveals normal IQ and cognitive function, but child occasionally asks that questions be repeated after staring blankly into space for a few seconds. Which of the following disorders most likely accounts for these symptoms? That's a very good clinical vignette that describes sort of the presentation that his uh, seizure activity, basically, is being mistaken for maybe daydreaming. And the answer, of course, is absent seizures. And um, I just wanted to quickly mention that this is a first order question. Now you say, what does that mean? What that means is that basically just asking you for the diagnosis. And the next question you'll see is a second order question, and I'll explain what a second order question is after that I read the question. A 12 year old boy is brought to the clinic because of several month history of strange behavior. According to his parents, the boy will occasionally stare and not respond. He also has tears in his eyes. These episodes last several seconds and then he returns to his baseline. He has not sustained any head trauma, is on no medications. Which of the following drugs is most appropriate treatment? Well, this is a second order question. And what that means is that the first order is sort of, it's a two step. The first thing you have to do is uh, you have to figure out what diagnosis is. And in this case, it's absent seizures. And then the second order is figuring out another aspect of that uh, disorder. So in this case, they're asking for the treatment of choice, which is ethosuximide. And that is given as choice C. Now the next final question, I'll talk about a third order question. A worried mother complains to her pediatrician that both she and her six-year-old son's teacher have noticed the child becoming inattentive. She states that her son frequently stops what he's doing and stares blankly into space before resuming his activities. EEG reveals a three-second spike and slow wave pattern of discharges. Which of the following agents would be most effective? Well, the way it's presented is a second order question, right? They've just given you the medications. But on licensing exams, in particular, USMLE Step 1, but it could be any licensing exam. It could be the MCCEE as well. Sometimes they have a third order question. So what's third order? Well, I can turn this into a third order question by putting in some... Um, I'll uh, put in some electrolytes. So we got sodium, potassium, calcium, and magnesium. And I'll modify the question a little bit by asking, which of the what is the mechanism of action? What is the mechanism of action? Or a better thing to say is, what um, what electrolyte? does the drug of choice for this condition work on? So that's a third order question, right? Because the first order is figuring out what is the diagnosis, and in this case it's absent seizures. Second order is figuring out what is the the drug of choice, and we know it's ethosuximide. And then the third order is figuring out what is the electrolyte that the drug of choice works on, and that is calcium. So the answer, well, the answer of the original question is C, and the answer for the question I made up would be C. So I hope this illustrates what a third order question looks like on a licensing exam.